Now we are going to look at our final OOPS concept, which is called polymorphism and how we can apply that into our automation framework, which we have built, right? So this is a project we have been working on. Okay, so we have written all these different methods. Now there are two very popular, or you can say there are two very important concepts in polymorphism uh, in Java. One is called method overloading and the other is called method overriding. Now we are going to look at both. Let's first start with method overloading, right? So as the name suggests, method overloading means you overload two different methods which have the same name, but it could vary in terms of the number of parameters, the type of parameters, right? So uh, it will, uh, the method will have the same name, but then uh, the number of parameters or the type of parameters will be different. Right. So let's see how we can apply that uh, into our framework and in which scenarios this could be useful. OK, so. If you remember, um, we have been working on this application where uh, we are filling up this sign up form. Right. So it could be any application that could be a sign up form and there uh, this that could be a, a field called select title. Now, mostly the select title would be a drop down right uh, with uh, different values like uh, that could be Mr. Mrs. and then um, um, some other uh, title which you can select, right? So there are different values in this drop down, and we need to select a value. Okay, so we have already written a method here, as you can see, that uh, it is called the select title, right? So this select title. Um, is the method where uh, you can select your uh, title from your application, right? So what we are basically doing is uh, we are using the select class in order to uh, select a particular title and we are using the method by visible text. Now, if you know uh, in Selenium, we have di different select methods, right? In, in our select class. So one of them is select by visible text, but there are others like uh, we can select um, a particular drop down value by its index and also by its value, right? So that's where I want to write a overloaded method here, right? So what does it mean? That means I want to start writing a similar method, but uh, it will be doing the same operation, but uh, the parameter would be different, okay? So here, as you can see, uh, my method name I have given, it's the same as the previous one, right? But still Java would not throw a exception here because our parameter is different. Now, if I give the same parameter here, right? And I try to create this method, it will give me a problem, right? So it will give me a compilation error because it's already defined in this particular package. Right, so I can't do that. So what instead we can do is now we can change here, right? We are going to say int index. So now the parameter type is integer, not string. And now you can see the error has gone, right? So now Java compiler, um, it can detect that this is a overloaded method and not the same method as the previous one, okay? Right, so what we can do is um, these two lines are going to remain the same. We are going to identify that select element and then we are going to use that select element to select by index, right? So it's the same operation, but sometimes it um, you may be, instead of uh, selecting it by visible text, you want to select it by index. So there is a different method. Now that this is a framework, right? So you can have different methods uh, doing the same operation uh, and in different situations it can be used, right? So uh, we have defined our method now. Now the problem uh, appears here is when we are going to call this particular method, how are we going to call it? Because the name is same, right? So how is going to identify that which method it has to call? So uh, let's look at our sign up page, right? So we will be going to the test here, okay? 
So this is our page object, and then uh, we need to select a title, right? So this, we are doing it by visible text. Now let's comment it out. And what we are going to do is sign up page dot select title. And once you type this, you will see there are two different methods, but it accepts different parameters. Now, depending on what parameter you are passing, it's going to call that particular method. Okay. So uh, if I say here one, so it's going to select the title by its index one, right? So I, I can have, I can define um, even call both the methods, but then it will create a problem in the application because um, uh, it might kind of affect your complete flow, but you can still have both because uh, what it will do is it will first select the title by this visible text, and then it will again select the title with the index one. Uh, these may be both same or different, um, doesn't matter, right? So. This is how um, you can apply method overloading into your automation framework. And uh, it can be useful in some scenarios where you are trying to perform the same operation, but uh, in a different way, right? Uh, you are changing the parameter type, you are changing the method, select method, right? When you are selecting it from a dropdown, that could be any any other scenario where you can apply these uh, this concept, right? So um, in the next video, we are going to look at how we can apply method overriding into our framework and uh, use polymorphism. Um, I mean, all the concepts of polymorphism into our automation framework. Now let's have a look at the second concept in polymorphism, which is called method overriding. As the name suggests, uh, one of the methods would be overriding another method, but the only difference would be it won't be the same class where both the methods lie, right? So one method would be in the parent class and the other method would be in the derived class. So in this concept, the methods in the derived class would override the method in the base or parent class, right? So that's the concept. Now, a very important difference between method overloading and method overriding is method overriding happens at runtime while method overloading happens at compile time. Now that we have already seen how the compiler could detect uh, it's an overloaded method or it's not overloaded method. But in this, uh, it will happen at runtime and not at compile time. So please remember that, okay? Uh, now to implement a uh, method overriding and where it could be useful in our framework, right? I have written a very simple method here. Now, let me first explain what's the scenario and where you could basically think about method overriding, right? So for this, uh, let's think about a application like we have here also in this application, we were entering the login credentials and then it was going to a welcome or home page, right? So in the home page, mostly you will see a welcome text, right? So saying that welcome uh, the username, right? So that would be the text which would be displayed on the home page once you log in successfully. Now, the scenario is after logging in, I need to verify whether it is logged in successfully by verifying that text is present on the page or not, right? So to do that, I have written this simple method, which is verify text in page, right? So I'm passing a parameter, which is the element. And then uh, this is the expected text, right? So basically for doing the comparison, okay? Now to grab the actual text, I have storing it in the string, which is actual text. I'm grabbing the element dot get text, which will return me the text of this particular element. Okay. Now in the next, I have written an assertion, which is basically doing this comparison, which is expected text uh, and actual text, right? And the method which I'm using is the string contains method, right? So this is not an actual comparison where you compare um, same to same, right? So this is a comparison where uh, the actual text could be any um, could be anything, but uh, the expected text should contain this particular actual text. Okay, so not a, a same to same comparison, but 
a part partly you can say a partly comparison of uh, the two text values right and if uh, the assertion fails it will return this message okay so very simple method and we have written this inside our base class now remember uh, we are basically extended this base class in all our other page object classes like right? so for example in the login page we are extending the base class method or base class uh, so that basically means all the different methods inside this base class are available inside the login page right so uh, where you could apply method overriding right so in method overriding i basically need to do is I need to define this same method inside the login page class, which is basically extending base class, right? So I'm going to define it inside the login page, right? So this is the derived class and this is the parent class, okay? So as soon as I um, write this particular method inside the login page, you will see Java already uh, kind of showing me that this is a overridden method. Right, so which means it overrides another method which is in base class. It shows you a upward arrow sign and also a O, o um, basically a O object, right? Now the next thing I need to do here is I need to use an annotation which is called override, right? So this basically this annotation means it is overriding another method which is in a parent class. Okay, so um, apart from this, if I want, because um, you simply don't want to uh, just write over overriding method into your um, into your derived class, right? There should be some purpose of doing that. Okay, so what's the purpose for us? So I want to change the comparison logic here, right? So instead of contains, what I want to do is I want to do exact comparison of both the text okay so for that i will use the equals method which means the exact comparison of the expected versus actual okay so basically what i'm doing is in the overriding method i'm changing the logic the comparison logic right now that could be uh, based on my requirement or that could be based on the scenario of what i want to perform right that could be number of reasons now of for example, where this could be useful is, say for example, this method is defined in this base class as we have done, right? Now in your project, you are not allowed to change any methods which are written inside the base class, just for example, right? Now in this scenario, uh, what, if, what if you want to change some logic inside a method? You can't, right? Because you're not allowed to do that. So what you will do is, you will go to your page object class and you will basically override that particular method and you will put whatever logic you want to put, right? So now, whenever this method is called, it will basically be called from the login page class and it will override the existing method in the base class, right? So this is one example where this could be useful. Obviously, there could be many scenarios, but uh, this is how you can use of method overriding to basically change some logic which is already written um, in some other class, right? Now, as I told you, uh, here you can see Java is already showing you that this is a method which is overriding another method, right? And if you want, if you click on that, you will land on the method which is the original method in the parent class, right? And you will see again some similar um, O symbol, but this time the arrow is downwards, which is which means this is being overridden, right? So um, this is these are some helpful symbols to identify which methods are being overridden if you look if you're looking at some classes, right? So uh, this is how you can implement met method overriding, and we have already seen method over overloading, right? So these are very important concepts. If you are using polymorphism um, into your automation framework, which is one of the important OOPS concepts, right? So uh, these were all the OOPS concepts uh, and how you could implement them into your automation framework.